Greetings. We've had a long journey with business rules. This is the last video. This is 10 videos on business rules, and if you've stuck it out that long, you're pretty remarkable. I hope that they're helpful and you can become very skillful. Now, most of the SunPlus users in the world will not take advantage of business rules, but there are plenty of people in the world that are interested in either developing new things for SunPlus or they work at a large institution that wants to create its own business rules, like a college or a hospital. And the bigger the institution and also the more that an organization is different from our normal tithe-based organization, the more business rules can make things easier for you. Our last video here is all about what we call core business rules. These are the business rules you should never touch. Don't monkey with them. However, it is useful for you to know what's going on for a couple reasons. First off, you can use the core business rules as a way to learn business rules. If you study out the business rules Carl has created, then you can become an expert at making your own business rules. And also, if you're running into problems with the core business rules, and your organization, at least you know why and the weakness in the business rule, and you can give us information to help us make them better. And so what I've done is I've documented, or I'm beginning to document, all of the core business rules, and I want to show you where that project is, and maybe you want to help me on it, and we'll see if we can't get them all sooner or later captured in this document. Stay tuned. Again, thank you for being so loyal through so many videos. Appreciate you using SunPlus. Like I said, this is the last video that I have in mind about business rules. I may occasionally make another quick video anytime I'm making a business rule, just record me making it. But as far as the topics I want to cover, I think I've covered all that I know. I know this sounds like a review that will be obvious to you, but it will make sense why I'm bringing it all up again in the context of what we're going to cover today. As we know very well, we have these event profiles that have been created. And these event profiles with these names, you could see AOA being put together for the church side and the AON being put together for the nonprofit side. And then there's some sort of little acronym end of line. Um, these event profiles are sort of the organizational starting point for business rules. Every event profile has many business rules behind it that when this event happens, those rules come into play. Now, I'd like to contrast a couple here. We have ledger entry end of line and ledger import end of line. You can see the E and I coding that is used there. So for every rule we have up here for ledger entry, we need to have a comparable one down here in ledger import. It's important to have two separate ones. That's the way these core business rules are created. So if you have a rule here protecting you against a certain mistake, you have to have the same rule down here for ledger import. And so if you change one up here, you've got to change one down there. If you make a rule up here, you've got to make the rule down there. That's one little pointer. The rule sets are organized under event code. For example, if we open this event code, and let's see what we've got here. We've got one rule. When JV type same and line one is not and so forth, you get the idea. We have another event, and this is the one that we've spent most of our time in this seminar on. And this is a whole bunch of things under here, maybe 20 different business rules that happen whenever you push the new line button. Let's just continue for just a second. I'm not going to go through all of them, so don't get impatient. We have setup address details. We go OK here, and there is the one rule, you see. So not every one of them have a huge number underneath. So let's just do currency daily rate rules. Do that. That one just keep looking got a point here just one rule so just by that little summary you could see that we have all of these business events but a lot of them just have one or two things under them so it's not as huge as it sounds the big one is this one the one we just looked at and then the ledger import and let's just take a peek over there in ledger import and logic would say that we have about the same number under ledger entry and ledger import and if you start reading the names you can start seeing 
seeing that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence. And so those all started with Li. And so if we go looking over here under this event right here, we can see they start with Le. In general, that's the wisdom there. All right, now these are core business rules. And it looks like I have a few extra, but four of these were ones that I created in my demos. So now, one of the things that we need to remind ourselves before we go further is that every rule that we encounter, let's just grab one here and just to remind us of it, invalid account code for this account. So let's open that up. And I want to remind you of something when we talk about it. It is easy to get high and mighty and self-righteous when you look down a rule column. What were they thinking? Why were they doing it? Or this rule is a big waste. Why is it here? But don't forget that first off, that these rules are created in the rough and tumble world of creating the core design and so some rules are existing that have not been completely fleshed out but also in the columns and this is a point to help you have a little bit more of an open mind this rule here was about asset code invalid for this account so we have lots of different types of asset codes that start with different things like B for buildings and L for land and Y for land improvement and then we have lots of assets like land building equipment fixed assets the way that that you would approach creating all the rules that would cover all the combinations of those things is that you would think horizontally instead of vertically. Most of the time we think about rules, we're thinking vertically, but we have to think horizontally. We would set up a rule action for every combination between asset code and asset account, and we'd set up every possible one. Then once we set up all the conditions that filtered into all the possible outcomes, then we set up the action rules that respond to each column. Well, the facts of the matter are is that some of the action rules may be irrelevant. That is, some combination of account code and asset code, we can't create a rule on, but we would have created a column because we set up each combination of the variables. But when we got to one, that particular one, we couldn't really come up with any action. So some wiseacre comes along later and says, hey, this rule action column doesn't have any action commands, no X's. Well, if a column doesn't have any X's, then it is a non-acting rule. I think we have one right here in this column four. Let's look at it. There's no X's. And so what has happened here, the first person who looks at it says, well, that's a big waste. There's no X's in this column. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that when the rule was being created, each variable combination of assets and asset codes were created so all the waterfront could be covered. But when we came to this particular combination, there was no rule to be written. And so there's no action. So that is not a waste or a mistake. That is the proper creation of a whole rule set. You cover all the waterfront as far as options and you write the rules that relate with them. And if you don't have an action for that particular option, then that's okay. You've got it set up and ready to go. I wanted to mention that to you before you get too self-righteous when you're looking at rules and saying, oh, this rule has no action. So it's a waste. Well, in a sense it is, but it is logical for it to be there because it's covering all the alternatives. With that background, I want to show you a document that we have here that I've created. And this document is going to be on Yammer and it's called Business Rules Documentation. You can see I'm already up to 54 pages down here. And by the time I'm done, it's going to be maybe 100. And also, if I can get you to help me, you're welcome to help me. Just download it and make the changes that you see. So here here are all the rules in core, and this document is all about core rules, not just every rule that exists in the Sun Plus world, but the rules that are part of core. So here you see we have maybe 30 event codes. For every event code, like this first one, is called AOA, 5AE, OSOJ. Come down here to a new page, and we've got AOA, 5AE, OSOJ. Here is the event code. Here is the event being described, and then it goes below and says, as no rules have been created for this event. This is a documentation of the event, but no rules under it. But now we're going back up here. The next one was AOA, 5AOAE, OSOL. And we come down here and we go to the next one. This is the event, AOA, 5AE, OSOL. Here is the event code documented, what constitutes the event code. And then 
I say here, no rules have been created for this event. I think we saw one a minute ago, but that's all right. We're going to capture the whole thing. All right, the third one down is AOA 5AE CRA, automatic receipt entry. So I go three pages down now, and we've got AOA 5AE CRA, and this is the description. And then we have two rule codes under this event, this one and that one. So this first one is documented here. This first one, AOA 5AE CRA 10, right there. And then we have the rule, and then we have the interpretation and the discussion of the rule. This first line in the interpretation describes what the rule is trying to do, and then it is stepping through each of the rule actions and explains. And so you're able to sort of reverse engineer what in the world were we trying to do here, and what can I learn by studying out business rules and the Sun Plus Core? Can I learn to make my own business rules better, and also can I understand what is going on and the business rules that are part of core. Here is a second business rule under this event. Remember, there's two business rules under the event. And so this is the second one right here, documented what each of the steps are doing. Then we go to another one, and this is the one that's big, where we have most of the important business rule. Ledger, entry, end of line. Sorry if you're getting dizzy. So this is the fourth one down. And so you go down to the event right here, and you can see I'm on page seven. And I will tell you that the next 47 pages are all going through each of the business rules under this event. And here they're listed. So here are all the rules under the event. So here's AOA 5AE 11. And so we come down here and we've got AOA 5AE 11. And then we have a description of what's going on in each of the rule actions. Rule action one does that. Rule action two does that. Now this is a way that I got my head around learning about business rules. And this is what I suggest to you. So you can work on this document and continue the documentation of each of the business rules and why it exists. And I've come up to a sort of standard at this point that probably needs to go through the whole document. I don't think I had followed the standard previous to what I'm showing you here. The explanation of rule action one and then the next dark line gives a summary of what the event does. This this rule requires user to enter asset codes for entries to fix asset accounts that are not work in process. In rule action two, this rule prevents an asset code from being entered for work in process accounts. And this one here, rule action three, this rule prevents the asset code asset indicator or the asset subcode from being entered for accounts between 100 and 199, okay, non-asset accounts, except for NGO. You write this up by interpreting what the rule is having you do, then you can come back after you've sort of gone through the steps and then this one but for NGO type organizations the rule that is going to happen and so forth and then I've highlighted yellow where I was actually frankly confused about what was going on so you would do the same thing if you were reading this you'd realize well Max is sort of confused here I'm confused or maybe you can write an explanation of what was going on so you could leave an answer down here if you think there's something that can explain it also if you are confused you can leave a highlighted message of your own. And basically, when we're done going through all of this, then we will have sort of an index to the business rules. In general, we will try to keep this document matching the core business rules. That may be a little bit ambitious. We may get this document completely done, and then for good reason, if you're in the middle of a hectic writing of business rules, you don't want to come over here and change the document. But every once in a while, I'll get an intern or somebody to sit and compare the business rules in the document to the business rules in core and this will become sort of our index and guide and discussion point about core business rules. So I hope you'll help out. I hope this document is helpful to you. I'm going to continue to work on it. I have gotten through all of this event code four, ledger entry end of line, and then I will continue working with the fifth one down here when I get a chance. That's what I wanted to show you. I want to show you this document and solicit your help. Now remember when it comes to core design, we want to be very careful about actually changing any of the business rules in core design for an organization. If they're wrong, you need to let us know that they're wrong and we fix them. And if you change it for a local organization and then they get an update, your change would be completely lost. And so it's sort of unfair to the organization to actually walk in and make a localization of one of these core business rules without at least a long discussion with the people creating the rules. I want to mention that 
that. We've been teaching you business rules, not so you can mess the core design, but you can start helping build toward a better and stronger core. And also you can do local business rules that are needed in a certain business case in your local organization. So it's been fun. Thank you.